Isaac and Rebekah. Before this story, we learned how God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. God had finally given Abraham his promise, but now required an act of faith. Abraham, with anguish and sorrow, obeyed, but the Lord provided a ram instead and blessed Abraham for his obedience. Now we will learn about Sarah passing away and Isaac meeting and marrying Rebekah as inspired by the book of Genesis. Abraham and Sarah lived a long life together. Together they braved famines, journeyed to new lands, made mistakes, and experienced the faithfulness of God over their marriage and family. Together they endured heartache and shared in triumph. Yet time is the cruel thief of life, and Sarah in her old age had gone to be with her Lord. Abraham ventured to the land of the Hittites and purchased a field and cave there to bury his wife. Filled with sorrow, he said goodbye to Sarah, his truest partner and friend. God had blessed Abraham in all things. He had accumulated wealth, influence, land, and adoration. Yet the death of Sarah reminded him that his life was but a vapor, and soon he would return to the dust from which he came. It was time to consider his son Isaac and securing his future. Abraham desired to find his son a wife as faithful and God-fearing as his mother was. This would be a great challenge, since he dwelt in a land where God was not yet known. Canaanites worshipped the gods of the earth, and in vain they pursued no higher purpose besides self-pleasure and preservation. Abraham called his most faithful servant to him, the oldest in his household and his friend. Come and swear an oath to me, Abraham said. Swear to the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will find my son a wife among my home country and family. Shall I take your son with me? the servant asked, for a woman might be reluctant to come with me if her potential husband is not there. You shall go to my home country without Isaac, Abraham pressed. God has promised him this land, and he shall not depart from it. If a woman is unwilling to go with you, then I release you from your oath. But I trust God will provide, since he has promised that my son will continue to build a nation with his children. So the servant swore an oath to Abraham by putting his hand on his thigh, which was a form of serious covenant promise. Then the servant departed back to the land of Mesopotamia, to the city of Naor, with ten of his master's camels and gifts. After a long journey, the servant had arrived on the outskirts of his master's homeland. At the time of evening, he brought his camels to drink from a well. This was the time when women from town came to draw water for their families. The servant looked to God, saying, O oh Lord, please grant me success today. Show love to my master, and show me who might be the wife of his son. Then the servant, knowing God's faithfulness, prayed a strange prayer, saying, I am standing near this spring, and the young women of the city are coming out to draw water. I will ask them for a drink, and whoever also offers to give my camels water will be the one you have chosen. It may have seemed like a strange prayer, yet the servant knew that a woman who was willing to go the extra mile to bless a stranger would truly be an excellent wife. As he was speaking to the Lord, Rebekah, the daughter of Abraham's brother, came near the spring to draw water. She had an elegance and beauty that stood out among the rest of the women. The dim light of dusk accentuated her beauty, and the servant prayed again that she might be the one for Isaac. He approached her gently and asked, Would you mind drawing me some water? Rebecca, even more young and beautiful looking up close, smiled with kindness emanating from her eyes. Of course, drink, my lord, she said while drawing him some cold water. The servant thanked her and took a drink with anticipation. As he was drinking, she put her hands together and said, I will draw some water for your camels. It seems like you have come a long way. So she emptied her own jar into a trough nearby and led each camel to drink from it. Ten times she drew water and carried it and waited for each camel to have its fill. 
She did so with diligence and speed. The servant watched her work with excitement welling up inside him. Have you done it, Lord? The servant thought to himself. When Rebecca finished with the camels, the servant ran to her and adorned her with gifts and gratitude. Please tell me who you are and who your family is, he said. Would they have any room for me to spend the night? Rebecca replied, My father is Bethuel, and my brother is Laban, and we have plenty of room for you and your camels to stay the night. The man bowed his head to God and worshipped. With a grin of astoundment, he spoke to the Lord, saying, Blessed are you, Lord, God of my master Abraham. Your steadfast love and faithfulness has orchestrated everything perfectly, and I am simply blessed to watch it unfold. Then the young woman told her household about these things. Laban hurried to the well to assist the servant and gave his warmest welcome by saying, Come on in. I've got the house ready for you, and there's also a place for your camels. They all happily settled in the house and prepared to eat a meal together. Before I eat anything, I need to tell you why I am here. The servant said, I am the servant of Abraham, and the Lord has truly blessed Abraham since last time you saw him. He has become great, with flocks and herds of thousands. He owns land, silver, gold, servants, and all sorts of treasures. Yet his greatest treasure is Isaac, a son he had with his wife Sarah. He was a son given to them in their old age, and God's favor is on him as well. The family sat at the table, astonished by what he was saying, for they knew Abraham from years ago before he had departed. The servant spoke again, saying, I have come here to find my master's son a wife, and I believe Rebekah is the woman God has chosen for him. He then told them all the things he had prayed to God, and Rebekah's actions confirming all that he had prayed for. Laban and his father answered, This is undoubtedly from God. Take her and go. Let her be the wife of your master's son, as God has made it plain. The servant praised God and blessed the entire household with expensive gifts. The thought of Rebecca leaving saddened her family, and they wanted her to stay a little while longer, but Rebecca felt the call of God to go. Similarly, as God had beckoned Abraham and Sarah to depart from their homeland into something greater, so Rebekah departed as well. Back home, Isaac went out into the field to meditate. The sun was setting, and the warm breeze whistled across the plains. Colors of orange and purple filled the skies, and the clouds moved with the wind. Isaac closed his eyes to pray. He missed his mother. He whispered to God and breathed in the sweet air of the promised land. He then opened his eyes, and in the distance he saw the camels approaching on the horizon. Rebecca, sitting upon the camels, also lifted her eyes to see a distant figure standing among the fields. She saw him drawing nearer and got off her camel. Who is that man walking in the field to meet us? she asked. It is my master, the servant replied. So Rebekah put on her veil to hide her face for the wedding. Isaac came to greet them and was informed about all the things that had taken place. So Isaac brought Rebekah to his home and the two entered a prepared wedding ceremony. He removed her veil and fell madly in love with Rebekah. The two became one, as Abraham and Sarah once were. Isaac enjoyed the warm embrace and comfort of his wife, and the two began to build a life with one another.